Green Dot is a, what, a, what we like to call a community mobilization program, meaning um, we are convinced if most of the people in any given community each contribute one or two moments, one or two interventions, one or two conversations to violence prevention, we can truly change cultures. We can change cultures on campus. And the metaphor of Green Dot is kind of the image of a map, a map of any given campus, a map of a community. And on this map are red dots. And a red dot represents one moment, one choice, one decision to harm another person in some way, raising your hand to someone else, um, uh, using your words to harm, to humiliate, to pressure, to, to coerce. Um, and these individual moments um, of violence, whether they're verbal or physical or sexual, um, add up um, to the point where on campuses across the country, the number of students that experience some form of sexual assault or dating violence are absolutely unacceptable. It's normal to have numbers like one in three, one in four, one in five. And so as you have this image of your campus map with these red dots, our um, metaphor is we need to counter those red dots. We need to counter those individual decisions with what we call green dots, which is simply my individual decision to make the next red dot less likely. So I'm gonna, whether it's I'm a student at a party and I see something potentially high risk and I make the choice to act, to intervene, to pull someone aside, to ask the question, or whether I'm the president of the university choosing to add a talking point to a public speech that talks about our commitment to end violence, or whether it's a faculty who chooses to assign a paper on community mobilization or looking out for each other or violence prevention, or whether it's a, an IT person who chooses to donate an hour to get a YouTube video online. And it, the idea is no one has to do everything, but if each one of us did one or two green dots in the life that we're already living, then very quickly this map, these red dots begin to get outnumbered and they begin to get displaced, they begin to get replaced by green dots. And when we have more green dots than red, the numbers come down, our campuses are safer, period. So that's the overall model, that's what we're going for. Engaging people in bystander intervention and actually getting people to do green dots can sometimes be um, easier said than done because there is this, um, this sense of, well, just, just do the right thing. Just go do green dots. And if, that, if it were that easy, we wouldn't have violence like we do now. And so um, what's important is to acknowledge that um, in specific situations, it can be hard. People have obstacles to intervening. Maybe it's peer pressure on a college campus. Maybe I'm concerned what my friends will think if I stand up. Maybe it's fear. What if something happens to me? Maybe it's uncertainty. I just don't know what to do. Or I'm shy. There's a whole list, faculty. I'm too busy. I have too many other things. We all have obstacles. And what's important is to honor those obstacles. And our expectation is if you're shy now, you're going to be shy tomorrow. If peer pressure is a problem now, there's no program that's suddenly going to make peer pressure go away. So what's important in engaging bystanders is really legitimizing and saying, we understand that there's not one green dot, one answer we can all do. And our challenge to you is not do the green dot I think you should do. The challenge to you is no matter what your obstacles are, find an option that's realistic to you. If you don't want to lose face in front of your friends, find a green dot that won't require you to, to, to deal directly with them. Maybe you'll get someone else to do it for you. Maybe you'll ask someone else to speak in. Maybe you'll create a distraction of some sort instead of directly confronting. And so it's important for us to um, acknowledge that there's not one right answer. And no matter what makes it hard for you, find something that would fit. Find something that would fit for you. The reality is we've been trying to mobilize our communities for a really long time. And the reality is on any given college campus, 
still the majority of people aren't involved in doing their part for prevention. And we have to ask ourselves why. And when I asked myself, two things became clear. One is, the message I used to, people like me who did prevention, used to give to men, was a message that essentially said, don't be a perpetrator. Don't rape, don't assault, don't do this thing. No means no, we've all heard it, right? Well, that may be a valid, true message, but the fact is, number one, most men aren't committing this violence. And number two, embedded in that is nothing, there is no positive, proactive way that men could get involved. I'm just telling them what not to do. I didn't do much better with women. As a movement, when we talked to women, basically our message was, don't be a victim. We called it risk reduction. So don't wear this and don't walk alone and don't drink too much and don't do this. Same thing, number one is, it just left women feeling disempowered. And number two, there was nothing to do it was just a list of all of these things not to do. So when I looked at why aren't people involved, I realized it's because I never gave them a way to get involved except for things to not do. Bystander intervention allows us to change the message. And instead of men don't be perpetrators, women don't be victims, I get to say, men and women, let's stand shoulder to shoulder. And here's a list of things we can do. In the life that you're leading on a daily basis, as you go through your daily decisions, if you happen to see a potential red dot, something that kind of gets your gut, is there a green dot you would consider doing? Would you be willing to step in as an ally? And you know what? The majority of people on our college campuses, students, faculty, staff, men and women, gay and straight, they do not want the next rape to happen. And when you, instead of telling them what not to do, when you say, will you step in and do your part? Overwhelmingly, they say yes. And our campus maps begin to turn green. Um, no matter who you are, whether you're a student, faculty, staff, administrator, um, there are ways you can get involved, no matter how busy you are, whether this is your issue or not. Everyone can get involved. The first thing I want to do is direct you to the website, um, whitworth.edu uh, slash green dot. And there will be lots of information about upcoming events and, and, and ways you can get involved. And you can understand the campaign. Um, more specifically, even if you don't go there, um, again, the challenge is I'm not asking you to go make this your number one issue. I'm not asking you to take this out in a different way. What I want you to do is I want you to look in your daily life and go, where do I intersect with this issue? And within that, what are the things I could do? So literally, if you're a faculty, maybe you put a PowerPoint slide that just rests on your uh, screen as students come in, that has a connection to services or a bystander tip of the day or the link to the website. Maybe on your syllabus you have a statement that's pre-printed that says your values around this issue and you're a safe person to talk to. Maybe you give an assignment or you give extra credit to go to events that are around prevention and community mobilization. Again, an administrator, someone in a policy making position, maybe your green dot is you're ensuring policies are enforced. Maybe you're adding sound bites to speeches you already give. Maybe you're holding accountable those that report to you and saying how are you making sure you're addressing this issue in your purview, in your area. And if you're a student, there's two challenges. Number one is, if you're in a situation where you actually see a potential red dot, figure out something. I don't care what it is. Maybe it's a direct confrontation. Maybe it's not. Maybe you make an anonymous call. Maybe you follow up after. Maybe you just walk away. Maybe you check on someone, pull them out and say, is this okay? But even if you never see a red dot. What I want to ask you students is, is if the next student that comes to Whitworth, Whitworth the next uh, incoming group, that freshman comes through you and your peer group, how would they know that the value of Whitworth students is to, um, violence is not tolerated and we look out for each other? How would they know that? And I'll tell you how they know. They'll, they'll know by the conversations you have by saying, just having a conversation, three, five minutes of going, what are we doing? How are we going to look out for each other? Uh, they'll know by the papers you choose to write. They'll know by the letters you write to the editor. They'll know by, I imagine every one of you is on Facebook. They'll know by the posts you put up. They'll know by your role modeling. So on a daily basis, even if you're sitting there thinking, I never see red dots, go, well, are you contributing to a culture on this campus that says safety is a priority and looking out for each other is a priority? What are you doing? What are you saying to make that priority clear?